in today's video we're going to take you guys on the easiest method that i know of to catch blue crabs some of the things that you're going to need or we're going to be using is these drop baskets that we have put some lead on the bottom of you'll need some tie straps just string so you can lower your traps down into the water a knife maybe a piece of pipe like we used right here to put the string on we're going to be using some fish and some squid and what we're going to do is get these things baited up and show you guys what we catch right here in jenkins creek in beaufort south carolina it is low tide right now the tide is coming in and it's going to be coming up about four to six foot while we're here we're just going to set them around this dock we do have five of the traps and we're going to throw some rods out here and see if we can catch some fish with you guys the question is also you know what area will be best is it the deeper water or the shallow water and don't worry about the color of the drop baskets if you're ever buying them blue crab or colorblind so our traps are set and we've set them in the position that each one of them has the same opportunity to catch crabs and all of these baits that i'm using they come from our shrimp trawl net we catch uh, a lot of bycatch in our shrimp trawl net when we're out trawling here in south carolina if you guys would think you would be interested in those videos please check out our shrimp trawling videos we're going to continue to make those videos also for you guys to enjoy as we continue our journey to get the boat that we're setting up for trawling uh, equipped and ready and just running good it's been such a challenge for us and we enjoyed carrying you guys along on those videos also if you're ever at a boat landing or anything or at one of these docks try fishing off the dock the main dock never come down here and drop your crab pots off of these floaters you know this right here if uh, people set their traps here it causes a problem for the boaters if the traps are not moved when the tide drops down you know the boats can easily hit those crab traps and stuff so that's why they always ask if you're in areas like that to stay up on the dock fishing the floaters or for the boats some landings in our area don't have the dock part coming down like that so uh, you, you know it's perfectly legal for you to fish and crab those areas but just be aware that when the boaters are coming in they have the right of way guys you ready to get them Graham? Yeah. what you got to fish with today frozen shrimp but well, then a mullet man i'm a i got some squid down here and some fish also man you can use some of my bait if you need right. to man let's get these rods set out i already got the crab pot set out yeah, let's got, try to get something i got my new pole oh yeah what kind is that uh cunning or where'd you get that one from boat, boat no arena the Buford Boat and Dock Supply? Yeah. Okay. Buford Boat and Dock Supply right here in Buford, South Carolina. They got a lot of assortment of uh, fishing goods, anchors, bolts, galvanized bolts, stainless steel bolts, t-shirts. They'll even uh, spool your reels. Uh, if you're ever in this area looking for crab equipment or anything like that to do with stuff out on the water, look them up. Buford Boat and Dock Supply. Brought you a sandwich. You brought us one? I did. Thank you, Steph. I got a good one. You use some of the squid on? Yeah, you can use some of that squid, man. How do you hook it? You just hook it, you know, basically like you do any other bait. Hook it a couple times. A little circle hook. That's right. Those circle hooks are good for hooking the fish right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah. And you're just using a Carolina rig set up. Yeah. He's rigged with the circle hook with a leader down to a swivel. 
and that looks like a half inch egg sinker and you got an orange bead on yours yeah. what does that orange bead do the orange bead keeps your line up and down okay sling it out there babe you got a double one you got a double oh yeah that look like a triple you got a triple three of them mm -hmm. no you got four mm -hmm. man triple. now why did you do that huh why did you spit on it that's what our mothers and grandmamas and granddaddies and stuff always taught us right here in South Carolina. Always spit on that bait, you know, it's just one of those saying guys. Right? Yep. You pull on a crab pot, this one here is baited with fish. Oh, you got one little tiny crab in there, man. Yeah. Little, oh, it fell right through. That's the one with the squid. Another little tiny crab fell out. Excuse the way I'm talking. Nothing. Nothing that one. We got two out here on the corners too. We need to check them real quick. The tide's starting to come in. Maybe uh, the, the crabs kind of move with the tide. The blue crabs. So maybe they'll start washing in here soon. We haven't been here. I haven't had these things baited but about five minutes a little deeper out here oh yeah that might be a keeper right there yeah it might be and that's on squid guys the squid's in the lead so far Watch out that's a little one. small one I don't believe that one's gonna make it. No, See right here, guys, four and three quarter. That ain't gonna make it here. We're looking for those five inch blue crab, point to point. More to pull. Feel like something in here. Feels like something's in it. Nope. 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 Nothing in that one. We crabbing. And some of these shirts, like you see Steph and I wearing in some of the videos, you can look right there in the merch and pick you out some shirts or uh, pants. Um, you got a couple different designs that people can look through, right? right? For the leggings, shirts, mugs. And you designed this stuff yourself, right, Steph? I did. I did. So to us, you know, that that's just more personal and that's why we like it, you know. So if you're watching this on your phone, it'll show up right below the video when you're holding your phone in the regular um, mode. And if you are on other devices, it's in the video description. The link to the spring store is where these shirts are. That's right. Man, this ham sandwich is good, guys. Now you cut up some little shrimp. Yeah. Ones I caught. Probably be good for the whiting, right? Yeah. Just like with crabbing, you know, you want to try different baits while you're out fishing. I got that one with squid. Try it. Yeah, this one's with the squid. And now you're going to bait it up with some of these little shrimp. Now, where, where did them shrimp come from? Is that the ones you've been catching, at, like in the video where we was crabbing and you were showing them how to cast the net in yeah. the causeway? Yep. Show me how to sling it one time, Bo. Now with these reels right here, guys, if you've never fished with an open face reel, do you hold, like when you're doing it, you're spitting on it again, huh? Yeah. You go up. How do you, you grab your finger on that line right there as you um, let your bail loose. And then when you're throwing, you just release your finger, right? That's the same way that I do it. These open face reels, guys. What's that? Yes. That was a good 40 yard cast. That's all I got. Or 40 foot. That's all I got. Oh man. Man, that ain't good. If you hook a big fish, he don't have no room to ruin. He, he would pop it. Yeah. So we crabbing, we fishing guys. It's only been about five minutes since we pulled these traps, but 
We're going to check them again. We're going to start out with this one right here. Closest to the bank, we're in about two or three foot of water here. Nothing. And one little, one teeny little tiny. tiny little crab. Pull that up. And I really like these baskets right here too, guys. They're a metal type basket and they seem to hold up pretty good. Look at there. Little small male. Teeny, teeny. I know what some of you guys are thinking. That'd be good fish bait, right? I don't know if you're supposed to keep those small uh, crabs for fish bait. They still have to be fine. Just right. Nothing. Oh, another another little tiny crab. He fell right through the mesh of this, this uh, basket. Couple more here. Well, there's three actually in there, but one of them is small as can be. Look at here. Another little small crab. And none of these are going to be keepers. That one there, he's about four and a half inches. Let's see what it is. She's got to let you guys see exactly how big it is. How big is it, Steph? How big is it? About four and seven eighths. Maybe three quarters. We need some mouth water and crabs. Nothing in Steph's. Grand saying he's got a keeper. Oh, I believe you do, little Grand. And this was on the fish. Our first keeper. Yeah, first keeper. I'm thinking that's a keeper for sure. Come here, you, Jimmy. Big Jimmy. Yeah, big Jimmy. Definitely a keeper. Oh, yeah. And I like to grab them right here and squeeze on that shell to see if it's hard. To make sure that crab is filled out. It's filled out. We can throw him right in here and we go on move these waters and stuff off of the ice. And we're going to put these crabs right on some ice to put them in that dormant. There you go. And he'll calm himself right down in that cooler. There's one keeper. Nope, nothing. One nothing tide. over here in this shallow area. The tide is coming in, as you can see. It has come up about a foot or so since we've been out here. Got a fish, Legrand? I'm about to flip them up here. Oh, goodness. Got him a stingray. Got to watch out for that business end. Believe it or not, guys, even if you grab these stingray up near their head, they can still barb you. They can take this barb and come all the way back around to the top part of their head. So be careful with these guys if you're catching them. And these barbs really don't even have to stick you because they have like little serrated edges down them. And if they even cut your finger, the bacteria and stuff that's on them, it's terrible. Let this guy go. Hopefully he don't come back and bite anymore. <laughs> Too small. Hold on to that metal. That one was up here in the shallow water. Alright, Legrand is hooked up on something pretty good here, guys. So run these little no, Just hold it right there. Let him kind of run, Grand. You know how to do it. Let him. You got something with some weight there pulling, buddy. I hope it ain't a stingray either, but I think you're going to have a time trying to see what this is. What you guys think this is? What do you think LeGrand has hooked up here? We have no idea. Oh, it's spot tail probably. I hope so. I hope it's a big spot tail. That would be awesome. Yeah. We'll walk him down to this floater here. So we can get closer to him. 
big fish, we can carry them down here. Don't give him no slack, Graham. There you go. How's he feel? He feel heavy. <laughs> he looks heavy. I see him. What was it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what we got here? He's coming. I don't know what it is. He came to the top. Looks like uh, one of the cow nose rays. I could only see the top part of a fin. Man, he's got that little pin battle. Just, just a stripping and peeling line off of it, man. Going that way now. Get to him, Graham. Reel him up. He's going to them pilings. Oh, he's having a time. Get him, buddy. Once you get him tired out some more, you can carry him back down the ramp. You gotta get him up. He don't want to give up, man. Oh, Jesus. A little bit too much pressure pulled the hook. That's okay. I'm pretty sure, guys, that was one of the cow nose stingrays. Yeah, something like that. Where are you getting all those bites? <laughs> all that bait you putting on there? <sighs> they like that big bait? Yeah, double. Double, triple, quadruple. <laughs> <laughs> quadruple. That's right. Sling it, baby. You fishing? I'm coming. He let her go. He was holding on. This big boy was holding on to that little female there under him. And the reason why these big male crabs hold on to those little females is after they breed, the little females, which is this one right here, turns in what we call the soft shell crab. They are delicious. If the crab is molded, that shell becomes soft and that big male crab will sit there and cradle her for about 24 hours until her shell hardens back up. But this one right here is still hard. You see that really red on her apron? Right there. She's a virgin female and she probably was looking for a big male to breed with. And look at this guy right here. Look how big he is. He's a big rusty keeper. And that's gonna be a good eating crab. Yeah, look how yellow Solid, he is. very solid. Yeah, beautiful yellow and blue colors. Keeper, keeper. Keeper, keeper, baby. Yep. We got two keepers. See how that other one's doing on that ice. He's chilling out in there now. You see how yellow that one is compared to that other one, guys? See how white-bellied that crab is? See the yellow one on this one? White. And look at that dark yellow. He's beautiful. We don't want those crabs flipped over in here. We like to keep them upright. I really don't know if that matters, but we just think they stay alive though. Good job, Steph. Good job, Oliver, with the bait. Cause you got to rebait this one and I'm gonna put the other one back out. Now, what was that on? That was on fish again. That was on the fish. And out here, the other one was on the fish also, the There's big the keeper. So, the fish is definitely catching more than the squid, right? That's right, so far. Get them dropped back in, baited back up. The only thing about using these zip ties, guys, is once the crabs take the bait off, you're gonna have to have some more zip ties, you know, to reattach your new one. No big deal. A pack of zip ties only costs 
couple of dollars, right? They even have them at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 for a little pack of a few. That's right. So this one here, I'm going to actually double it up. This is one of the ladyfish, right? Looks like it. I'm just going to kind of double it up so that it's a little harder for the crab to get off of it. And that ladyfish is real oily. And this is fish by catch we've caught in the trawl net, right? right? That's right. So all of our bait and stuff that we normally use fishing comes out of our shrimp trawl net. Go down, stranger, and bring us up a big blue crab. I mean, that current is uh, pushing those crab traps in an angle right up under this dock. Yeah, the tide is coming in, so it's pushing everything this way. You can see this stream is straight out that way. And it's a good thing that the tide is moving now. The crabs should be on the move. Look here. Oh, oh another yeah. one. I've caught up the y'all. We all have a big keeper. I want to take it all up. I got three on that pool. Mine's not quite as big as y'all's, I don't believe, but I bet mine's going to taste better. He does look like he's a keeper, he though, looks, so that's oh, what's important. Man. Definitely a keeper, about five and a half inch crab. Pretty crab. A little bit softer body, but we're going to keep him. Three. And two little tiny ones. And that's on the fish again. So we're kind of just backing off of the squid as we go and we're going to be using more of the fish in our traps now. Show them the crab walk. You're a pretty one though. Yeah, this one, this one. Which one? Or is it a she? Oh no, it's a he. Hey, good night, Seth. Oh. Look here. There you oh, go. Oh, we caught him a whiting. A little whiting. And these are really, really good eating. It's a little small one here. You want me to go and hook him for you, Grant? Yeah. That's a good fish sandwich there, though, ain't it, LeGrand? Yeah. Here you go, buddy. Oh! He jumped right out of my hand, man. We can keep him for yeah, bait if you want to. Yeah, keep him for bait. We'll keep him for crab bait. <laughs> oh, wait. Hey, Steve, I want to show you something. Oh, Lord. Ah. Oh, Lord, man. You got, you got a mouthful of scales. Oh, oh, oh gross, Grand. Oh, here we go. What size is this guy? That's on the squid, oh, but I believe he's a little one. bit small. He's a little on the small side, guys. Beautiful blue color, wow, though. Look at that. Pretty. Look at that blue on him. And each one of these crabs have a unique blue color to them. Have you noticed that? This crab. Oh, he is a keeper. He is. Oh, no, he's a no, hair he off. He is like just a he's little like, tiny hair. He's like, you can't squeeze two hairs off your head between it, between it and the gauge. But look at the different color. We're definitely, we're not going to keep him, guys, but look. He's pretty aqua blue compared yeah. to the other ones. They have some too, but that's my favorite. That big one with the yellow that you caught. We're going to get him back in the water. Grow up one or two more days and come back. <laughs> one or two more days would get, make him a keeper. Like the crabbing is picking up the tide has come in another foot foot and a half and it is moving that water is moving and these crabs are on the move they're coming in with the tide looks like we may have another keeper here oh he's got those short little points i don't know if he's gonna make it uh -oh. your leg out the way buddy i'm sorry he's gonna make it oh yeah he's, he's gonna up. make it he's over there we go just a hair over number four Guys, if you're using these little drop baskets, 
make sure that when you go to pull them up you pull it up really fast so the crab can't swim up out of it the water pressure will hold them down in the bottom of that trap we just dropped that when you think there's one in it already it ain't been a minute nope no just anxious got that crabbing fever yep i believe we got another keeper guys you better get out Nice one. Ooh, pretty one too. Beautiful. You better get out. Yeah. Check his size. Definitely a yep. keeper. He's a keeper. A little bit light body crab. His shell's pretty hard, but I can feel it in his weight. So how many does that make for us guys? How many? Five? I think a total of five. I don't think we only got six. But five is right. Five. Yeah, that other one while ago was just two hairs short. Four and 31, 30 seconds. And I'm going to start moving, shifting some of the pots closer to the marsh grass sound that way. Get it out of this swift water and see if we can catch some coming along that bank. And this grass right here will help block some of the current coming through here. The tide is coming in from this direction, guys. So in this line right here, we're so far in behind this grass that that trap will lay right down on this bottom. May give the crabs a little bit better break and the tide to get in the trap we'll see i love crabbing y'all love crabbing leave us a comment let us know you love crabbing i figured out the trick to catching the most crabs make sure you're the one that's pulling the traps the most right right <laughs> right a little small guy in there probably just drop him on back down Slowed back down. Good luck, Steph. Yeah, buddy. Ooh. Oh, you got three. Oh, no, I don't think any of them are big enough. One fell through. Two of them has fallen through. And you still have one. Oh. And it went through, too. Wait a minute. Pull that back up. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing a hole right here. We need to close this up. What you got there, buddy? You hooked back up? Oh, man. Another old darn stingray, bud. I'll move out your way. You can flip him up. Dang, boy, I'm gonna have to get you to spit on my bait. Grand is study getting bites, and I'm like, what the world is going on here? Man, you're killing me. <laughs> Oh man, I want him. You can have him. Okay, I want to fish with him. I've caught some big, big trout, speckled trout on these guys right here. So I'm going to put him on a reel and maybe see what will bite him. How's he feel? Good one? Man. You like stingray magnets today. <laughs> big one i've seen other guys on youtube eat them grant those stingrays you ever ate any you gonna walk him down the dock and get him up You're going to have to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Let me catch something. What's your secret? I see my little... I got a little trick up my sleeve. What is it? Oh, man. 
Baby crab do 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 do. And another. They might call their parents to come eat. I hope. Are you here, Daddy Crab? Big Daddy. Big Jimmy's. Oh, he's holding on to the bottom. Oh, goodness. Pull him up, pull him up, pull him up. Pull. Oh, oh, man, pull him back down. Him back down so that was a big keeper. There. Yep, he just needs to get in the top. I think the, the current. current is pulling the basket off the bottom, so that's how he was on the bottom of the net, hanging on to the bottom of it. We might have to add a little bit of weight as this tide's coming in, guys. We got some more lead. We'll add to it if we need to, if that happens anymore. Another one in there, just a smaller one. Yeah. About a four inch, four and a half inch little crab. We'll just let him eat on that bait. Maybe he'll call his parents too. You can't let stuff pull them all, can you, Grant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> little one. Little tiny one. She beat you to that one. Let's see it. Oh, oh man, he went right out. through the net. Or fell out. He wasn't but about that big. He needs to shed about five more times. Legrand, you better not get another bite or I'm gonna grab your reel. <laughs> and look at the beauty that we're surrounded by here, guys. It's so beautiful here today. The wind's blowing about 10 mile an hour right now. The breeze feels so good. Even right out in the open. Seventy-eight degrees, so that wind feels really nice. You hooked up again? Yeah. Here I got that roof. Not another stingray, please. Please not a stingray this time. Oh man, I believe you can flip him on up, Grant. A little bit more. Oh man, he swallowed the hook too, buddy. How many of sting rays is that now? Four? Four. Four or five? Yeah. He's catching more stingrays than we're catching crab. We might have to find a way to make some use out of these stingrays. What would you guys do with them? We got another one. Another one? Come on, Bo. You're killing me. <laughs> now, look at this here. Look at this, guys. They don't even have to bite Legrand's hook. He's so lucky. <laughs> the fish, he snagged it under the fish's jaw. Chinny chin chin. Little yeah, whiting and look at those dark black stripes that's starting to come out on that little whiting. Uh, we'll keep him for crab bait. Yeah. He's going back in the water. He's going to be crab bait. Maybe you got your tackle box organized. Yeah. So, Pierre, you got this one? You definitely got it ready, man. Look at that. Yeah, hoops, All your supplies, little knife. Oh, why aren't you using these, man? I keep them for. Uh, now them right there is great for grabbing fish and stuff. That's why I keep them in there, uh, spare, like hooking in something big. What's that right there? Wait. No, you clip with your line, cut your line and stuff. Man, they're sharp too. Keep them in there. Again, it's made to clip on so that way you just if you have it clipped on you you just pull yeah. it out and snip it and let it go right back in but this one might be been in the tackle box a little bit much it just can't take this salt water this salt water destroys everything except aluminum and stainless steel right 
Somebody's got to make a run for these crab traps and try to pull them again. Start with this one first. Oh man, that thing's drifting way back. We may need that. It, it did? Yep. We're gonna have to um, move either it. move it or add some more weight to it, Grant. You think we need to move it down to a shallower area? Yeah. Let's just pull the pipe off of there. And you move it down that way and we'll see what Steph's got here. This one has zip, nothing. So we'll you think we need to because, move it? Yeah. It's getting a little bit too too light too swift here and that current's just moving these pots all around little baby one and we may have to move it too the little grand is way down there by the grass on this one Tiny crabs getting in here. Where's the big crabs? I think it's gonna be right in this one. I hope so. Um, big crab. We need a big one. Ooh, oh yes. Yeah. Is that a keeper? Uh, it's close. close. Man, let me get the gauge. You got yours in a honey hole. Yeah. Oh, I hope, I hope. Oh, Michael, that was. 10,000 I believe this crab's gonna be a little short. Yeah, it looks like it's a little too short. Oh, no, he's a keeper. Keeper. Keeper, keeper. He barely made it, and he's a hard-bodied crab, so we're gonna keep him. We got a half a dozen now. Yep. Go in there and join your buddies and chill out a little bit. That's gonna be some good eating right there. Got a double up here. Ooh. Oh, he almost dropped out. Found another hole in the trap. We got to get a measurement on these two. Let's get this gauge. Mm, oh, hair. man. Just a hair off. Gosh, Lee. So close. That so close, this shorter. one. Most people would probably keep this crab because I'm not sure if that's exactly five inch or not, but we're gonna let it go. This one's a little shorter, so. A little yep. bit shorter, four and three quarter there. Nada? Oh, got one, but I don't think he's big enough. Let's check him. I don't think he's gonna be take him to the gauge and see, but nope, he don't want to let go of that bait. Let me see. Let go. Nah, he's not big enough. Whoa. He gonna get you still. He tried for a second, <laughs> and then just drop it right down. You probably get back in that hole. Maybe. So we ended up with the six nice blue crabs that we showed you guys catching. We're going to take them out here and just clean them, show you a real quick way to clean blue crab. Only one thing needed for this job. Water. High pressure water hose. These crabs are iced down. They are not dead. They're just like in a dormant state right now so we can handle them. Pull that off. Put the facial area off and get these lungs, the dead man fingers. People call them, but they're actually the lungs. Get those off. Crabs are so easy to deal with. I think they're easier to clean than fish, guy. Who can clean a fish faster than I can clean a crab? Let me know if you can. You can leave it in the comments. You won't hurt my feelings. Most YouTubers 
we know how to handle all kind of comments. Are you getting off the oh look at that pretty one there. Remember that one. Ooh, he's so heavy. Oh, man, you tough to break that shell off. I'm gonna slow down on the next one, guys, and just show you the position I'm putting my fingers in so that I get in the leverage to get them busted open. And that's that little apron underneath that I'm pulling off the back right here. So what I'm doing, I get him laying down. I get right here under this pincher where it comes off his body. It's a good area to put your thumb and just pull, push down on this side and up on this side with your thumb. Real simple. Can you guys clean crabs faster than me? I'm sure you, some of you out there can. I'm cleaning a lot. Oh, we got a left handed one. Left handed. Any of you guys left handed? That wasn't too bad. So the last thing we do, because we don't like eating, we don't like cooking whole crabs, guys. We we have tried it. I know some of you guys love that mustard right there, but I don't. And all the excess stuff goes right back into the marsh for the minnows and stuff to eat. So I don't feel bad about letting letting them have it. Check out how pretty that meat is. Pure white meat in these blue crabs. Just beautiful meat. Got a question for you. What's your favorite part of the crab? What part do you like the most? My favorite is right here, the claw area. What's yours, Steph? The swimmer fin, the, what they call the back fin, lump crab meat. That is a big chunk of meat, and she's talking about right here. This is the swimmer fin, and there's a big section. You can see the individual sections coming out to the leg, but right in here, that is a huge piece of chunk of white meat right there. Look at those beautiful colors on that crab. And both that section he mentioned on the claw and that back swimmer fin, if you do them right and hold them right when you dip them in butter, it's like having a crab popsicle. And who doesn't love popsicles? I know my little granddaughters love some popsicles. And it's not blue crab popsicles, it's just the regular popsicles that I I just love giving them to them too. Well, we got these uh, six crabs cleaned up. We're going to take them in the house and get them steaming. Aren't they pretty? They're going to be delicious. Let's go. Wow. Let me get us in the, in the sun. <laughs> oh man. We're going to be good Yummy in our room. neighborhood. So guys, I love this red copper pot that we have right here for one. It's great for all types of stuff, but one thing that I love about it is it comes with a little rack that you can actually steam stuff in. Little legs are easy to just put on, squeeze them together, and get them right in those slots. It lifts it right up off the bottom of the pan. Real simple and easy. That's what I'm all about. Why well, make life hard? We're going to put about, say, an inch of water or so in the bottom just enough that you know that it's not gonna boil out of water and we're only going once we get them steaming 
we'll get the temperature up high as we can go right now on the stove and we're gonna get this water to boiling once it starts boiling and you get that steam coming off of it that's when you know we get that lid on it to trap that heat in on those crabs and we only boil ours or steam them for about 15 minutes i'm doing it that in that manner because at 15 minutes it just seems like the meat just you know peels out or comes out of the shell really really easy i like to place my crabs with the opening up what i mean is turn them upright that way when you're putting your seasoning on them which I love, 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 Old Bay. Old Bay's got a little bit of everything in it, you know, guys. Put a little bit of that on them. And we don't have to worry about really seasoning our crabs that much because when we get through cooking them, we usually have some of these little canisters or little metal cups you could use glass ones or anything but we'll put a little butter in them we'll have it sitting right here as it's heating up and that's when when that's all done and we're picking and sitting down eating our crabs that's when we will take that pretty crab meat and dip it in that butter with that old bay and i'm telling you don't waste your seasoning do it in this method try it one time just see what it's like i don't think you'll regret it and your seasoning will go a long way we're gonna get them going for 15 minutes we'll bring you right back on to show you what those crabs look like we want to see them turn that orange red pretty color The crab are ready. Woo. Man, they are looking perfect. I think they're going to be delicious. And my mouth is starting to water. Got a few little utensils that we're going to be using. You know, just something to crap that meat out of those big claws. And these right here are good for getting that meat out of them crevices and stuff if you need a little bit of old bay and our butter that we had melted you hungry looks good to me it smells delicious that crabbing has made you hungry probably the sandwich is gone you know how it is when you're out on the water or you know outside like that all day spending this time guys man you just get that craving, especially when you see these big boys coming in. I want to go ahead and get this big one right here. I ain't going to let Steph get that one. Pretty up one crab on Stephanie while she was videoing. <laughs> <laughs> I fooled you again. I'm going to put mine on my plate now. One, two, three. One, two, three for you. Three for me. Six. I thought it was first come, first serve. Not today. Come on, you man. You got five out of the seven from yesterday, so I'll take my three today. That's because you wasn't hungry. I'm just a lot slower. So it was my fault? No, you're just faster than me. You need to learn to speed up. I'm trying. Trying from the best. We love having fun and making each other laugh. I'm always dealing with this lady right here love her to death thank you for coming along with us too Steph. i enjoyed it i'm glad we caught a few crab it's always good to have someone you love in your life to do the things that you want to do guys are you going to eat that big old crab over there i sure am you ever seen that movie life i'm gonna eat my cornbread I'm done. Mmm. <laughs> mm. mm. oh. 
Our neighbor just called and said he heard some lady smacking. Why were you smacking so loud? Why did he mean by that? <laughs> so guys, you ain't gonna believe this right here. Just after I get through eating those crabs, my good little buddy Legrand, he shows back up and his mom has fixed Steph and I a plate of food and Legrand, what, what all is this? <clears throat> Them um, Brussels sprouts, uh, taters, Brussels sprouts. Asparagus. Asparagus. And what is that right there? That's called uh, dolphin Mau Maui. Uh, mm -hmm. Dolphin. Man, thank y'all so much, man. Uh, <laughs> that crab was good. But I've already just sampled a little bit of this fish right here with a little bit of this hot sauce. And I'm telling you, your mama can cook. Yeah. I might need to hang out with y'all a little bit yeah. more. And I'm going to do him like he did me with the crab. Yeah. I'm enjoying eating while he's talking. <laughs> it is good. Flaky. That's how we do it here in the South. We give to each other. We always look out for each other, and that's the way we are. We are thankful for LeGrand and his mom fixing this plate of food, and LeGrand said that he thought about us, and he brought it to us, guys. What more can you ask for in life? Guys, tell me to uh, share for the others. Reach what you sow, somebody end up coming back. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Reap what you sow. God Look. wants you to treat others the same way you want to be treated. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And we are thankful. We sure are. You probably won't eat all the one. <laughs> we eating again, guys. We'll see you guys later. Take care. No, keep talking a little bit. <laughs> what? I ain't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. I get back home, I got eating big old, uh, one of them whiting fish. Oh, you got a whiting cooking too? Uh, yeah, I got it. It's already done, I get back. Oh, okay. I had to fly him out, caught him yes, yesterday evening. Man, yeah. that, that dolphin, that's some pretty flaky white meat there now. Yeah, that's, that's... Well, he goes out for And you said you already ate, right? Yeah. You full? Yeah. Mm. That fill you up. <laughs> you better believe it'll fill you up. These potatoes, yeah. man, they're perfect. All of it is really good. Mm. There won't be none of that if y'all get to it. Huh? There ain't gonna be nothing left now. We're not even gonna have to cook supper now. <laughs> man, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna let none of this go to waste. No. Mm. We, we like it all. <laughs> you might not like all this green stuff, but we like it both. I don't, let me, I let me try these little Brussels sprouts. I, how, how did she cook these Brussels sprouts? She stick them in the skillet, the skillet with bacon grease. Put bacon grease inside. That uh, bacon grease is what it did. Yeah. I that's, bet. That's the best condiment I think we have is bacon grease. And that mahi mahi, she, did she cook that in a little bit of bacon grease too? or? She, she put a little bit of bacon grease inside the pan where it won't stick. Right. And just, just fried it on the, each side a little while? She fried it on one side and fried it on the other side. Yeah. Wow. What kind of seasoning did she put on it? I don't know. <laughs> this is her to show us. And that asparagus, that, that she cooked it the same way. Yeah. It looks like, is there little, piece of bacon. little pieces of bacon in this yep. asparagus? <laughs> They got bacon. Mm. It's good. You hear that crunch to it? Got it. Oh, yeah. Miss Gail knows how to cook. Uh oh, Stuff. You better watch out. Why, I'm going to let Gail cook for me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the produce come in. Might she have to hire Gail to do some more cooking for us, right? <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, she's got them good, too. 
She might have to start feeding us all the time. Yeah, did you see how slender we're getting? We'll work for food. <laughs> yeah. I told her, I put, uh, feed the kids and litters. That's right. Yeah, feed all your friends yeah. and stuff. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I took some out of the freezer to cook some. Yeah, you were talking about it earlier. Yeah, so. I was talking about it earlier, but mm -hmm. uh, I hope you got that video, that beefy is pulling my pool. Yeah, we got a lot of video. Look how flaky that meat is, guys. That mahi mahi dolphin. Yeah, that's what we're going to try to catch. You're talking about eating good in the neighborhood. This don't get no better than this right here. Steph, I'll be full of them spaggers. Mm -hmm. You're going to be full off of that stuff, but you can leave all this part over here for me. Alright. <laughs> I get full, I will. <laughs> this plate of food right here feeds me and stuff. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have to call your mama and tell her thank you. You tell her for us, too. Well, I will. She's at the house now trying to Clean the dishes up and stuff like that. Yep. <laughs> Ride around. Keep. Thank you, man. We well, love you. Thank we, you. We enjoyed the day with you, buddy. All right. Take we'll care. See you later. All right. I'll talk about y'all. We're glad you did. He got it going on, too, with this. That's right. That right there. That big heart. Somebody like that with a big heart that's willing to, you know, share a little bit of love with us. That's what it's all about. We're so thankful. And McGrath is just such a great guy to hang out with and just enjoy time with. His attitude's always perky and happy and you never hardly hear him say any excuse me say anything negative about anybody and he's just always positive and that's why i love to spend time with